So, do you want to start? No. Where did I start? Did I, I think us? you did. Did I start? Oh! Hey Claremont! Welcome back! Welcome back after the longest spring break of all time. This is your official orientation back to Claremont. There's a lot of important things that we want you to know before you step in the building, so let's get at it. So first off, when you do come in the building, it's going to be kind of like your local supermarket in the sense that there's going to be a lot of decals on the floor, dividers in the hallways, but it's just intended to make sure that everybody's safe and distanced apart. Our biggest pieces are around keeping your distance, washing your hands, and wearing a mask if you can't keep your distance. Big thing about the mask is they actually aren't mandatory, but the times that you should be wearing a mask are when you can't physically distance from one another. So definitely in the hallways, whenever you ride the bus, maybe when you're waiting outside, and in some classrooms where we'll have to physically distance and if we can't, we might ask you to wear a mask. Another big change this year is that half of you are going to be going home at lunchtime. The other half that are here for lunch, we're encouraging you, especially in the first few weeks when the weather is nice outside, to have your lunch and hang out with your peeps outside. Bottom line, if ever you have a question about anything health and safety wise, just ask. Our staff are ready and willing to help. Hey Buckham, how should I go about entering and exiting the building? To be honest, what we're going to try and do with everybody is do a staggered start in the morning. So in actual fact, we're going to try and have all of our staff here by about 8.45 and then we're going to ask particular grades to come at certain times, just so that we don't all flood into the building at the same time. So grade nines, we're going to try and ask you to come at 8.55, grade tens, nine o'clock, and then grade elevens and twelves, anytime after 9.05, but you got to make it in and be ready for class by 9.15. We want you guys to be entering in the door that is nearest to your block one class. That's going to be the door that your teacher walked you in this morning. And then there will be some breaks. Obviously, we've got to have those during the day. It will definitely look different than our old timetable. So breaks will happen in the middle of block one, the middle of your afternoon block two, if you're here in the afternoon, and then obviously at lunch. We encourage you at all of those times, if you're going to eat something, you would travel through the hallways, probably with a mask to be physically distant, and then you can go and eat outside. If you don't have a block two class on any given day, we are asking that you leave the building through the same door that you came into and that we uh, would love for you to leave right away at the beginning of lunch so that you're not hanging out in the building. Bottom line, in classrooms, like in your block one, it's okay, you're in your cohort, you don't have to be physically distanced and you don't have to wear a mask, but you're always welcome to. But anytime in the hallways and outside, definitely be wearing a mask and try and keep socially distanced as much as possible. So this year, we definitely have some increased cleaning protocols that we're going to be um, working with. Just so you guys know, our actual full custodial team, which is five people, will be in at lunch, which is not normal, but it's because we want to go through two deep cleans, one during the school day and one after the school day ends, uh, which would be great. Mr. Clerk, can you give us an itemized list of all those things that will be cleaned? I most certainly can, Mr. Buckham. Doorknobs, light switches, countertops, tables, desks, chairs, keyboards start to name a few wonderful very nice and I think one of the biggest things that we should remember as students and staff is that we're actually trying to help out our custodians so if we're happen to be eating lunch maybe in a hallway maybe even in a classroom and we make a mess we'd really like you to clean it up especially this year of all years because we want our custodians to come in with the limited time they have while we're out of classes to disinfect that's a big one for COVID so for you guys to help out, every classroom will have a disinfectant spray and a cloth so that you can do your part too. Perfect. And the number one thing you can do uh, to stop the spread of germs is actually washing your hands well and often. Today you will receive a daily health check, actually two copies of a daily health check. You are going to take these copies home, review them with your family, and bring one back in signed to say that yes, we have reviewed this together and we know what we should be looking for on a daily basis. It's really important that we have all of our staff who have already done this, so all students definitely need to do that. But remember, keep that one extra copy at home so you can always review it. And the other needs to be returned to your teacher. 
In previous years, you might not have felt well and still come to school worrying that I'm going to miss something, um, I don't want to stay home by myself. There might be a lot of reasons why you still try to power through and come to school, same with us, trying to power through and not take a sick day. This isn't the year for that. This is the year that if you are feeling any of the symptoms that are on um, the guy that you're taking home with you, this is the year that we stay home and we um, potentially, if those symptoms don't resolve themselves right away, that we talk to our families about getting tested. And I think that's a big piece is that in the end, even if you started to feel some symptoms at school, it's not a bad thing to, to have to go home and just be super safe and say, you know what, maybe I'll just check in with my local doctor or Island Health and make sure that I'm okay. Uh, we would much rather that than trying to do the typical power through thing at school. It's, it's definitely not the year for that. So for cohorts and learning groups, block one will be the class that will be your cohort. And how this is gonna run is, is in a quarter system, which is definitely different than our old semester, but in a quarter, it goes for 10 weeks. And for that first five weeks, it'll be block one in the morning. And then after lunch, it'll be block two, but you're only gonna come every other day. So then after the first five weeks, you are going to start coming part-time every other day in your morning class and full-time 100% of the time in your afternoon class. So that on the whole, you're gonna get between 75% to 100% of face-to-face -face instruction for both your block one and your block two classes. Now, hey to clerk, mm -hmm. if I'm in a cohort, am I actually allowed to visit with other people from other cohorts? Absolutely not. Just kidding. Yeah, of course you can. You can still hang out with your friends. We would ask that you are hanging out with your friends in a physically distanced way or that you are using your masks if you are up close and personal with people outside of your cohort. In case you guys didn't know how to wash your hands before, I'm gonna give you a couple of pointers. You're gonna to wanna to wash your hands underwater for approximately 20 seconds, doing all your fingers, top of your hand, bottom of your hand, and then you're gonna to wanna to dry them. A few times during the day that you might wanna think about washing your hands before you eat, mm -hmm. after you leave the classroom, before you enter a classroom, and after using the washroom. If you are unable to wash your hands at a sink with soap and water, try using any of the hand sanitize stations around school. Also, in terms of respiratory etiquette, first things first, there will be some people who occasionally cough and who occasionally sneeze. This does not automatically mean that there's something massively wrong. So if that has to happen and people are doing that, just remember, and I, I think everybody knows this already, but the best thing you can do is if you actually have to sneeze, is sneeze into your elbow um, or your sleeve would be fine, but just don't do it into your hands. And same thing for a cough. So what's the best time to wear a non-medical mask? Well, they aren't actually mandatory in all places of the building but we do require that you have a mask on in the hallways or where there is high traffic, um, such as the student lounge or around the bus loop. Um, you do need to wear a mask while you're on the bus. Um, and we do open it up to anybody who feels comfortable or would like to wear a mask in their classes. You are absolutely welcome to do so. And remember, so if I'm wearing this mask and I could have been doing it this whole presentation, but the reason I am is because I'd like to wear it right now. If I'm somebody who wears it all the time, that's okay. It's your choice. But remember, there will be times during the day where you'll have to have one when you can't physically distance. So make sure everybody bring a mask. Mr. Buckham, I wonder if we should talk about what kinds of things students should be bringing to school with them and what should they do with those things? Definitely. So when you have your stuff preparing for class, uh, everybody needs to know that we're actually discouraging the use of lockers this year because really you could just bring it with you and keep it in class, etc. But if you did need a locker, that's okay. Just check in with your block one teacher and they'll talk to you about the process. That makes me think a bit about lunchtime and water fountains. Mm -hmm. So students will need to bring their own personal water bottle with them. They can fill up the water bottle, but unfortunately we're not using our water fountains right now. And students should um, consider bringing their own lunches with them, especially in the first couple of weeks. Cafeteria service uh, will be really light and might take a little bit of time to get up and running.
So, Mr. Clerk, for transportation this year, uh, specifically with school buses, they're actually going to map out where you sit. So, it's going to be something where you come to the school bus, and I hope you guys can be prepared for this. You'll have the same seat every time, and that's definitely for cleaning purposes and just to kind of organize things. So, don't be shocked by that. And very new, we're going to actually have busing at lunchtime, which as a high school, we've never had, which is kind of cool. Um, so if you're leaving your block one class and you don't have a block two, then the nice part is, is we need you to exit the building and there will be buses there waiting for you uh, to go home. But super important, if you have not signed up for busing yet, if you haven't signed up through the district website, you will need to do that. Otherwise, you won't be able to ride the bus. So make sure you check in with your block one teacher about that. So this is the end of our student health and safety orientation. Thank you guys very much for participating. We hope you have a wonderful year. If you guys have any other questions that come up in the coming weeks, please reach out to a staff member. We're all here to help. Mr. Clerk? Anyone?